Welcome. This is what is happening on the sun today, the 10th of May, 2011. 65 years ago today, the US space program in effect started with the successful launch of a captured V-2 rocket from White Sands, New Mexico. As those of you who saw my explosive sun video last night will know, uh, there has been quite some excitement on the sun in the last 24 hours. So let's take a look at the sunspot regions and see what has been going on. We're losing regions 1203 and 1204 over the west limb at the moment. A new region has sprung up just behind them which is not as yet numbered. Region 1209 is decaying slowly and is just a couple of small spots. We have a newly numbered region, region 1210 near disc center, which has been responsible for some of the smaller flares that we've seen in the last uh, 24 hours. Region 1208 is relatively stable. Region 1211 is a newly numbered region in the south, the region that I talked about yesterday, but it's not a very extensive region and I don't think it's going to amount to much. In the south we have a small region coming over the east limb, but it's only a few small spots and it do doesn't seem to be at the moment amounting to much. But the real news is there's been a major flare behind the east limb and the sunspots from that region are not yet visible. So let's take a look at the SDO movies and see how these regions developed over the last 48 hours. Particularly keep your eye on region 1210 and the development of the new region ahead of it to the west. Since yesterday we've had two C flares, one of which was a C5. You might think that's not much to get excited about, but remember this flare was behind the east limb, and so much of it was obscured. So I suspect that this was at least a low to mid M flare, and the fact that it's a long duration event indicates that it was associated with a coronal mass ejection. But how do we know it was from behind the east limb? Well we can see that it was from the coronal movie from the Solar Dynamics Observatory. Keep your eye on the northeast limb. But here's that same movie seen in more detail. Watch for the explosion just after the flare occurs. Note afterwards there is an arcade of bright loops that form and slowly grow over the next few hours. You can clearly see the filament eruption in the Helium 304 movie at about the same time. So let's take a look at the coronal mass ejection itself and for that we go to the SOHO coronagraph data and we see the CME off the northeast limb. However, the thing to note here is that the CME seems to also be occurring all around the Sun. This is what's called a halo event. And if indeed that's the case, then part of that coronal mass ejection is heading towards the Earth, which is quite unusual for an event on the east limb. Beautiful, isn't it? Then the Stereo B data should have a very clear view of it near disk center, and indeed it does. So what is actually going on here? We have a filament, shown here in green, held down by some stronger magnetic fields. The filament then becomes unstable and starts to rise. Pressure from the surrounding corona pinches the red field lines here until they reconnect, forming a low arcade of loops. As the filament rises some more, the next set of field lines start to pinch in, and when they reconnect form yet a higher arcade of loops, and so on. So the filament erupts, with taking a large amount of magnetic field with it, leaving behind a bright arcade of coronal loops, shown here in red, just like what we saw in the movie. Apparently there's been no effect of this flare and coronal mass ejection as yet on the Earth, because the auroral zone seems very quiet and the KP index has been varying between 0 and 2. But we wouldn't necessarily expect an effect as yet, because it generally takes 24 to 48 hours, sometimes even longer, depending on the speed of the coronal mass ejection, to reach the Earth. So in summary then, the sunspot number has risen to 93 and I suspect it may even go higher. The x-ray background is at B3 level, the radio sun is at 104 solar flux units, the solar wind speed is still quite low at 335 kilometers per second, and the KP index is still rated as quiet. With the activity we've seen in the last 24 hours, I'm going to have to upgrade my forecast. The chance of getting C flare is good, there's a possibility now of getting an M flare, though it may take a couple of days for the region to recuperate from its current levels of activity. I think the chance of getting an x flare is still fairly low. Uh, there's a good chance of getting more coronal mass ejections and a geomagnetic storm is possible in the next 24 to 48 hours. If you want more details follow some of the links in the description box below. And by the way I just could not resist this picture of a sun dog 
from the spaceweather.com website. I think it's one of the cutest pictures I've seen for a while. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.